number one seed, Martina Jancelovic. Only four women started the 81 kilogram light heavyweight tournament bracket, so all four will occupy the medal podium. Jancelovic came through a terrific contest against Saltanat Medenova of Russia, who boxes in a completely different style, a back foot punch picker, capable of going forwards, but that was in the, as well, but she was faced with this juggernaut in the faith of Martina Jancelovic, the tournament number one seed, who prevailed on a unanimous decision where her educated pressure reaped dividends. Her opponent is from Romania, and that is Alexandra Petku. She prevailed in her semi-final against Alessia Krisiuk of Ukraine on a 4-1 split where she showed good variety and a terrific right hand to the body. Alexandra Petku even though she's boxing and representing Romania, actually spent time at Islington Boxing Club in North London and won the 2019 Women's Winter Box Cup, which was a multiple, multiple ring festival of boxing at the Guildford Spectrum, commentated on that tournament. And she's also a champion at the National Association of Boys and Girls Clubs in the UK. This woman took 2019 European Youth Bronze at plus 81 kilograms in the heavyweight division. So there is Petku, part of a 10-strong Romanian boxing team, five women, five men. The Russian contingent is made up, excuse me, the Polish contingent is made up of six women and five men in their 11-strong team. So we're underway then, 81 kilogram light heavyweight action between boxers from Poland and Romania. And invariably the tournament number one seed, Martina Jancelovic is immediately over that front foot and looking to walk down her opponent and already has landed with some heavy leather from both hands. Petku just in danger of being caught cold in his first 30 seconds. Now appears to have got to grips with the pace of the bout, but she's being scored upon repeatedly to both body and head. It was a trade-off there, but the final words going to Jan Celovitz, who is finding her target repeatedly, both upstairs and downstairs. Petku trying to fight fire with fire, but she's being picked off as she's trying to disengage and retreat. Good lead left hand lander by Jan Celovitz. So Jan Petku now trying to establish her own lead left hand. There's a reverse one-two from the woman in blue. But Pan Jan Celovitz as she lands a good left hook. Good punch picking downstairs and through the guard from Petku. But with a minute gone, it's been a brilliant first minute for Jan Celovic, who started right out of the, of the blocks and has maintained that pressure through this first minute and change of the first round. So Petku trying to let those free-flowing shots go, but she's been presented with an on-rushing opponent who is bobbing and weaving and exploding into her own punching range. Now she tucks up in a turtle shell, does Jan Celovic, before Petku spins off back to the space of centre ring. Solid right hand over the top from Jan Celovic once again. And is it's evident what she is doing, but it is very difficult to disrupt her. She lands a right hand over the top, which was preceded by a jab, and then she shovels a pair of shots down to the midsection. She keeps on coming, looping roundhouse right scores. Good response in a cluster of punches from Petku, but Petku biting down on the gum shield, trying to deter this forward movement. She stands her ground there and causes Jan Celovic to hold her feet momentarily. But once the range increases, Jan Celovic is invariably trying to climb inside her opponent's jersey and apply that pressure once again. Very difficult mission this for Petku because as I was saying, you know as Jan Celovic lands another right hand, what she wants to do is to get over that front foot and let shots go from both hands and unless you have the movement or the variety to deal with that, it's very difficult to prevent this woman, the woman in red, from coming forwards. So referee has called time. We've had a mouthpiece that has been dislodged. Quick rinse and reinsertion. And we're underway with just over 30 seconds to go in the opening round. Referee following COVID-19 safety protocols that are in evidence here in Roseto. Just ensuring that his 
White latex gloves are desanitized. That's a beautiful counter left hook from Petku. Jancelovic went bombing for a right hand, missed the target. Petku remained in the pocket and scored with a left hook. But then Jancelovic has come back and had right hand success of her own. It's another trade off to conclude this final, this opening round. Petku boxing well off the back foot, but Jancelovic just keeps on coming, not giving her any respite from the pressure that she is seeking to apply. And this is anything but naked aggression. It is educated pressure. Look how she tucks up there before snaking out a shot to the body. Good body shot combination from Petku to end the round. But for my money, Jancelovic's aggression was effective aggression and she should take it. Absolutely. That was an impressive opening round from Jancelovic. And as you said right at the end there, the key is that it's not just gung-ho aggression, it's educated aggression. And she gets it 10-9 on all the judges' scorecards. And that was the only possible way that you could score that round. Petku is giving it back in stages. She is a capable fighter, you can see that, that's obvious, but she's just being overwhelmed by Jancelovic and I wonder whether she'll be able to get through the full three rounds here, Petku. It's maybe a bit early to, to say that, but what's impressive about Jancelovic is the fact that she doesn't really load up. She does throw a lot, but she's got that kind of looseness, relaxed style about her where you do get the feeling she can do this for nine minutes quite comfortably can Petku take it for that long I don't know so into the second round then Martina Jancelovic the tournament number one seed looking to establish that jab once again but there's a nice two shot combination from Petku on the back foot but invariably Jancelovic able to bulldoze her back towards the ropes and just Reduce the ring space around her. Nice three-shot combination from Petku. Right, left, left, right, left, excuse me. But Jancelovic continuing to walk down her opponent. But Petku making a concerted effort here to try and make her pay before she gets into punch and range. Solid single landed by the woman in red. Cluster of punches through the gloves of Jancelovic from Petku, who is boxing very now well now. She's not just going backwards. She's trying to Im implement lateral movement left and right into a game plan. Simply so that Jancelovic simply can't come forwards and walk her down. Here she's going left, moving clockwise, and invariably she'll change the direction in a moment just to prevent her opponent the luxury of marching on train tracks and closing the gap. So a minute gone in the second round, and again, clever spinning off the line from Petku who's made a significant adjustment in this second round after Jancelovic jumped on it from the opening belt and made life very uncomfortable for her throughout the first three minutes. But again, even though she's trying to employ lateral movement and spinning off in punching range, Petku, as she scores with a good burst of punches to the body, it is very difficult to keep this woman at bay as she lands with a right-hand lead, continues to walk down her opponent. These shots, some of them being caught on gloves and forearms, but they're still backing up the woman in blue. She then responded with a nice scoring combination to both body and head. But look at Petku, invariably on the back foot. And that's the second time Petku has been spoken to about that infringement, her punches straying around the rear and below the belt line. So can Petku find it within her wherewithal to negate this front foot pressure being applied by the tournament number one seed? It's a very good display of punch picking from Petku, what she displayed in her semi-final. Look at that for a single right hand to the body. And now it is becoming a little bit more difficult for Jancelovic to close the distance because she's being kept on the end of leather from the flashing fist like that jolting left jab from Petku. So it takes some engine and some confidence to box on the back foot like that. And now Petku coming forward for perhaps the first time in the contest. Now she's back to lateral movement in this second round. Skipping off to her left and snaking out that jab. Brings a right uppercut through to try and catch the advancing woman in red. Very good adjustments have been made by Petku. But Jancelovic continues to swarm her way forwards. But her accuracy and success did decrease as that second round went on. It did, absolutely. I thought Petku had a much, much better round that round. I did her a, a, a disservice at the end of that opening round because she, she dug in there. She didn't quite do enough to win it, as we can see from the scores there, but she did a lot better in the second round than she did in the first. She had some success in the first, but in the second, 
she just quickened her hands up a little bit, let some more combinations go, and that resulted in Jancelovic having more to think about. She was getting caught on the way in, having to reset a little bit more. So a kind of moral victory in many ways for Petku in that in that second round. But you don't get anything for moral victories, and Jancelovic is, is two rounds to nil up through these first two. And, and rightly so. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the third and final round. Will Jancelovic really put a pedal to the metal here and try to finish with it with a flourish or is she happy just to box this final round so into the third and final round we go then and the pattern resumes Jancelovic trying to get on that front foot and close the distance against her opponent but Alexandra Petku made a terrific adjustment in the second round. She's put on the end of a reverse one-two there, though. Long straight right cross, followed by a stiff left jab from Jancelovic, who is now up on her toes, showing that she too can box in the space of the ring. And she isn't just a steamroller who looks to flatten her opponents with incessant pressure, showing some of her ring craft as well. Because again, the onus is on the woman in blue to turn pressure fighter now. She's got to take her opponents out of there because after two completed rounds, after making a very good adjustment in the second round, Alexandra Petku not doing enough to take it. And it's going to be very difficult for a boxer and punch picker like Petku to overturn the deficit that she faces and score the 10-8 round that she needs. Of course, one of the great things about this sport of boxing is that you can take your opponents out of there with a single shot. And at these heavier weight classes, that more likely than down the weight, such as the greater weight and force of punch that the athletes are capable of delivering. But it's a very unlikely scenario because Jan Celovic will be aware of that, so she'll be remaining switched on and not presenting her chin on a platter for Petku of Romania in blue. But that's what Petku's got to try and overcome here. Solid left jab landed by Jan Celovic, and now it's Petku who's getting over the front foot. And because of that, the impact was doubled up from that left jab as Jan Celovic walked her opponent onto it. Well, again, only four women in the 81 kilogram light heavyweight division. So I've commentated on both of Jan Celovic's fights now as Petku lands a terrific right hand to the body and then shots to through the guard as well upstairs oh but look at that for a left right combination as Jan Celovic what I was saying is having commentated on both of her contests this is the first time I've seen her box in any manner other than on the front foot and it's a nice opportunity one that she has created she has earned by taking the first two rounds for her to show a different side a different facet of her game good left right from long distance from Jan Celovic and now it's her who's playing matador to the on-rushing ball. That is Alexandra Petku. Just content to manage this one very effectively, not catch a stray elbow as she lands with a left-right combination once again. Petku comes back with a right hand over the top, which was the most notable success during that cluster. Beautiful reverse one-two from Petku, scoring. And again, with a cluster of effectively picked straight punches, the woman in blue. So it's been a terrific contest, this one. But the insurance policy built up by Martina Jancelovic over the first two rounds is going to see her occupy the highest plinth on the medal rostrum. A very good display. Alexandra Petku deserves immense credit. She was jumped at the start of the opening round by, the, by Jancelovic. Never really got herself into the opening round. I thought Petku adjusted magnificently in round two by presenting angles and stepping off to the side and moving laterally. Wasn't enough to take the round. And then she showed that she could get on the front foot in the third and final round when Jan Celovic prevented a facet to a game that we haven't seen during this tournament by boxing on the back foot on, the, on her toes. It's a good fight. It was a really good fight to watch. Very, very enjoyable indeed. And got two good operators there, Jan Celovic and Petku. Petku, I thought, responded brilliantly after that first round. Jan Celovic, as you said, did jump on it. And she's won this fight, she'll claim that gold medal, but, but big, big credit there to the fighter in blue as well. And just look at what confirmation of victory means for Martina Jancelovic, the tournament number one seed, taking it unanimously over Alexandra Petku of Romania, but that is a terrific performance for Alexandra Petku to occupy the second plinth on the medal rostrum 
to go from winning Women's Winter Box Cup and NABC domestic titles in the UK, those tournaments for novice boxers. Here she is on the continental stage coming away with 